Oh, so he has done it. There is a main switch there. That's good. Gutten Tag and everyone. So we're back at the flat today. I've not been in here since plastering, painting's been done. So you're in the same boat as me. You've not seen it. So today we're going to get cracked on and this is going to be the last video on this flat because I need to get this finished and move on to the next one. So let's jump in and have a look. Right, so here we go. A lot of the filling painted, ceilings have been skimmed, skimmed. Looking good. Filling's been done, painting. Still see a faint line there, but he's done a, he's done a good job to be fair. Nicely, nicely. Good job, so now I can get all these screwed back, get it tested, which I actually didn't get done, but look. Nice. All back together. Yeah, good. Superb. One thing I just want to check quickly in this cupboard, outside, I'm not entirely sure. Have a look in there. All right. Six and a half hours later. Oh, so he has done it. There is a main switch there. That's good. Right, I've stripped out all that old fuse board. This is where it was recessed into, and that's the little cupboard on the back with the new switch in there. Um, so what I've done is fix a bit of trunking up here. I've knocked out that many, because I don't need that many because there's only about five circuits in here. Um, I'm just going to, I've marked them up there. I'm just going to cone cut them out and then I'm going to fit those um, grommets, you know those fire ones, I'll show you before I do it. And put that up there, bring that in, then I'm going to gland the meter tails into the bottom, take them out to the new switch. And yes, this should be, uh, should be nice. So I've just cone cutted the holes out there, and these are the grommets, they're like a whisker, flame retardant grommet. You just knock that in there, little slice, and you can drop your cables in there. Snugly wuggly. Okay, so now we've got our board fixed in. There's all our grommets between, just up there. All cut out nicely into there, so now I've just got to drill uh, a hole through here, bring all my cables through, and then bring them to the fuse board. Right, new meter tails go out the back of there. I've still got to put a 16 mil earth in. Um, there's a bit of trunking. That takes the cables into the back where my uh, consumer unit is. This is the BT cable, which has got to be put onto this one. But I'm going to put a box. That's going to get an end cap. Probably going to put a box here. Or if I can get one of these um, MK VP. Uh, I think they're VP. Might not be VP, actually. What is it? I can't remember. Anyway, it's MK. So that goes on there, and I'll probably put a little joint in there for the BT cable. Right, these boards from the manufacturers come with sort of like 40s, all the 32s on one side, and then the 16s, and all the 6s on the other side. So basically, as this is a dual RCD board, you want to split the lighting, because I've got two lighting circuits in here. I believe I've got two of them. I can't remember when I wired it. What have I actually got? Lights. No, lights and smokes. So I've got one lighting circuit, one smokes, one kitchen ring, one oven circuit, and one radio which does the flat. So what I'll do is I'll split the circuits equally over the two RCDs. So if the oven uh, if the oven happens to trip, it will take out the light in, and um, if the um, sockets on the kitchen ring are this side, if they trip, then it won't take out the rest of the sockets in the flat. So I've got to get an end cap for there, for there, and for the piece of trunking out in the cupboard. Um, all my cables are in now. They're all they're not they're not in. They're, they're sort of in line where they're going to be because it just looks nice when you dress it in. But it's not that important. People sort of stress about it too much. Um, there's me gas and water, and I've just got to bring a main. I've drilled another hole in the back of here, and that will come in and then come in the same grommet as the tails, um, just there. So now I can. Um, what I'll do is finish all the second fixing, come here, do all my dead testing. Um, I like to do it before I put it away because you've just got to take it out again um, and then I'll put it all away nice and neat.
I'll probably stick on a time lapse when I make this off. I'm not sure why, but every manufacturer does this. Doesn't matter what board you buy, Hagar, MK, BG, um, blah de blah. They all do this. They they don't. Why don't they put a nice neat ferrule on there? Then we can you know lose it in there. Then it's like a shrouded one. They just have this horrible big crimped bit, and then you end up with this sort of naff. It's sort of showing all the time. I don't know why they do this, but if anyone could explain to me why, um, for, it, that just winds me up. But because we're not allowed to sort of strip our conductor down here, and and we'll get, you know what I mean? We get thrown off site. Classes as rough as rough as what you like. You know, if we left our conductor down here, they can just do that because it's their board. I suppose they can do that. There we go, fairly neat. Nice big board, these MK ones. Um, yeah, it's all there, it's all neat. A lot of people like to put ferrules on, can do that, and a lot of people like to put eye dents on. I can't really see the point in doing that in a domestic situation, sort of saying that that's circuit one, two, because it's so easily identified. And as this is twin and earth, you can you can trace back that, that um, conductor to that one and you know to that earth because you send twin and earth if you want you pop that lid off and trace those three I understand it when you're doing single cables because you're not going to trace all the way back through the trunking for a massive building um, but yeah in a, in a three phase board I would do it but in a single phase domestic I, I don't I don't my cables but that's it so it's fairly neat so yeah I just don't like this look I don't want to cut them but look so long Right, I'm just installing the copper buzz bars in the bottom and you can see those breakers MCBs they've all got a little bit of movement on them so what I'll do is I'll get the this in in properly behind the gates when I say gates these have got like a, a screw terminal uh, that pulls forward when you tighten this up so you want to make sure that this copper is this side of it so that when you screw it up it pulls in tight um, because sometimes you miss these and that'll arc out that will cause that to burn out so you just double check these once you're done. But what I'm saying is, is get these all done up lightly and then get that pushed in to the top and then push on the side and then get all these nicely and straight before you tighten that up and that'll make the cover of the consumer unit go on a lot easier than if you... So if I was to tighten that like that, that MCB would end up out of line and then you have to sort of wrestle the cover like this. So that's how you get those lined up. Right, my next job is in this cupboard. I've got two ends of a lighting circuit, so in and out, if you like. I've literally just got to put a PIR and a light in this cupboard. So when she opens the door, she can come in, get a coat, and the light will come on for her. Then we've got a little Robus LED and one of these little zinc uh, 360 PIR sensor. Again, rather than trying to get all your connections in these little connections here, which you won't do because it's too tight, what I do is I'm taking the cables to the uh, to the light do all the do all the connections in the light then they're accessible and I'll just take a free corner from here to here so the brown becomes the live or the blacks the live and the brown then switch wire brings the light on but you just do it how you want to do it as long as you flag the, the black up as a brown and the gray as a uh, as a blue which is a neutral right, there we go simple but effective sensor and an LED light a bit of making good for the painter but She's got a painter handyman on this job, which is good. So that's that little one ticked off the list. Next one I've got to do is get in this cupboard, um, sort out the CAT6 cables, the radial and the BT point. So now I've got that socket second fixed because them cables come in this cupboard, down the back of this frame here, double socket there. So basically I've got that comes on the fuse board and then that runs around the rest of the flat. This is just the radial. 
And then below here, I'll have the two Cat6 cables that I'll terminate into a box with two patch leads. And then you'll end up with a BT socket here. And then the home hub's gonna sit on this um, little shelf here. But I'll show you that once I've finished it. There we go, so you've got a double socket. You've got the uh, two data cables, um, which will patch into the home hub. And then there's the master BT socket there. Next little job is just fit a fan isolator for this um, bathroom fan in here. There we go, nice little fan isolator there for that fan in the bathroom. Tomorrow. Right, next day. So I've just been to pick a load of bits up. I'll spin the camera around and show you in a minute. Um, what a manic morning. You know, it's, it's already half nine. I've been to about six different wholesalers getting bits, looking at a job. Um, yeah, so you know it is. So I just picked up this little silver line tester. May as well do it now, actually. Um, basically, I have put a battery in it. It doesn't come with a battery. Um, just to test my ends, really. So you plug, just test your continuity on your leads. So basically, you just plug that into one end. So say, down here. That just gets plugged into that one there. And then the other one goes in the other end where the end of this cable is, and it just checks the continuity on all the, make sure you've got them punched down in the right place. So that's plugged in down there. That one's plugged in there. Literally turn it on, and then you see how that's flushing. Goes through all the cores, and then they're in the right place. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Superb. So I think there was like a fiver. For a fiver, that's fantastic. So I'm really happy with that. I've just picked up some 16 mil green and yellow, some lugs, two drivers. So these are constant voltage, depending on what LED you go for. I've got some nice profile here, which I'll show you. Basically get an LED profile. That's a little diffuser which you can cut. This gets mounted underneath the cupboard, like so, along that edge, like that. And then I've got an off cut to go on that end piece there. And then depending on what LED strip you buy, it will say constant voltage or constant current. And this is a constant voltage, these are blue, constant current are red. And they generally go, they can be mounted, say like 10 meters in a cupboard and then you can wire to it here. Whereas these mount pretty much right next to where um, you're putting the LED tape. So these are constant voltage. I will get into this a bit more when I get into it. And I picked up these, I had a nightmare the other day, I broke all my little blue ones. So I've just gone and picked these CK90 rods up. Tool station, I think the cheapest I could find was 33 quid or something, but I will put the links. If you want to look the links, I'll put the links down below in the description of this uh, video for you. So first thing I'm gonna do today is get this 16 mil earth put in to the board. Then I can actually energize the board and um, just start getting all the second fixing done and tested. But just going back to the last video, somebody said to me, oh, the filters, they're inside the fan. Um, they're not, there is no filters on this whatsoever. They've just left that to blow grease into this cupboard. Uh, this kitchen ring's now on and tested. It's the only thing I've got on so far. Probably gonna blow a little bit of dust out, but that's all right. Um, testing out some of the appliances, and you think, well, how long do I know this is gonna have left on here? Um, so start that off shut the door and then look little LED comes on the floor there look at that that's pretty cool isn't it three hours 15 minutes I've got to test this because I think there was like a kinked pipe but I've had this out and in so I'm hoping this sorted it for them but we'll see right as you can see I've got some lights on um the plumber's been here bless him he's had a nightmare Dale the plumber so we looked at, I said to him, I oh, know I said that's probably working now, it, it went off. So I called him, he was coming here today to do a couple of leaking rads that the builders um, didn't do properly. And what he's had to do is, is um, he's had to put a new feed in for this, um, this dishwasher with a pressure, uh, I think it's a reducing valve, pressure relief valve, I'm not sure what it is. Um, basically, they, um, whoever did the dishwasher, they teed into the... Um, Honestly, you couldn't make it up. They teed in to the radiator return pipe. So it wasn't actually on the cold water. It was actually teed into the heating system. So as soon as the, you put the dishwasher on, it would suck all the water out of the heating system. The boiler would go off and then this would go off because there was no water flow. So we managed to figure that out after a bit of head scratching and it's now sorted it. So yeah, what a bodge, eh? Right, so as you can see, um, I've got my 
lighting now switches separately on the lights. Smoke alarms are all second fix, lighting's all done. And then my little lighting in this cupboard, as soon as you open the door, and you come in for your coat, light comes on. Um, which is a nice little feature, just gonna light that. And then in the bedroom, it's just got one pendant. And then as soon as you open the door into the wardrobe, come in to get your clothes, the light picks you up, and you've got the little LED under there, and then the LED above. So that's a nice little feature again. Uh, extractor fan is done. Um, I like these expel airs, you can't even hear that running. It's very silent. Uh, the light is done, moved. I've actually can't find the pull cord, so at the minute it's in a way go. So I'm gonna have to go off and get a pull cord in a minute. Um, smoke alarms are working. I've literally got to do um, LED lighting under the cupboards now. I'm gonna fit this profile. Um, you get these little end caps that you slide in. You get two little brackets that you screw up and then that rail will sit in and then the LED tape goes inside of there and then you just click this little diffuser on. Um, I've bought two strips. These come in meter lengths. Um, obviously I've got to cut a piece down now to fit there and then the off cut will do that cupboard over there and then I've got two two sets of um, LED tape. Okay, so I'm not sure if these are the same length. We did all the two bits, one, I think one's shorter but we'll, we'll have a quick look. Yep, so you can clearly see this one is shorter, this one is for that little cupboard um, over there and this one is for this one, that's about 1200 long. Um, what I will say is, if you look at this tape, there are bits where you can cut. So you could cut that there. Um, obviously don't cut your connection off the end, so you want to work your way this way first. Um, stick that, drill a hole, poke them cables up, and then stick that in there, and then stick that along, and put your um, put your little diffuser on. And when you get to the end, you can chop the end off. Um, you don't need to use it all, but I think these are about 1200, 600. Um, and then the two drivers, um, one in each cupboard. But yeah, I've got the Aurora stuff because it all matches, Aurora and like, um, yeah. Right, there's one done. I think you'll agree, they look really smart. Um, cable comes up here into this cupboard and then driver's gonna get mounted in here and basically this goes on the 12 volt side and then that's my mains in. Right, that's one done, let have a look. Scooper duper, that's quite nice isn't it? Look, gives them a nice little light there. Neat and tidy, because this is a high cupboard so you can see it, so at least it's neat and tidy. Just got one more to do over there now. This system is actually pretty good because rather than screwing the uh, channel up into the cupboard you can do it like this on the bench and because this is held with a bracket um, you just click it on after so yeah I like this system make it up like this stick all that in there and then all you've got to do is drill a little hole out the back and then click this on just a little up. So that is all the LEDs done. There and they're very, very impressive, I know. <laughs> okay. See the little strip under there, and then the only thing you've got in this cupboard is a little driver mounted there. Um, if she doesn't like it, I can box it in, but she's gonna be absolutely fine with that because it's not taking up no space whatsoever. I could have mounted this in the cupboard, but then it's inaccessible. So if that goes, at least you can get to it there. Last jobs to do in this flat are get that bonding cable onto the uh, water main in the back there. This one here. Um, a bloody nightmare. So it's half past five and I'm still working. Look, somebody stole the bloody pull cord off the job. All the materials are stuck in a box. It's the only thing missing. So I've searched for it, can't find it. I picked that up and I picked some Wagos up, two two ones. Yeah. So let's get back to the bloody job. You ever gone across Oxford at rush hour? Awful. Shall I? <laughs> Good lad. Right, all bloody done. Thank God for that.
Good job. You take a picture of my tagging. Yeah, it was rough. Oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> no, that was fine with it. <laughs> Sweet. Beautiful. 3.28 a.m. Right, that is it. I'm home. I don't even know what the time is. Um, yeah, flat's done. Um, I think you'll agree it's a lot better than what they had. Um, you know, what I filmed a month ago. Or whenever it was. Uh, moving on to the next job next week now. Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, I've got a, a little beard. I know, I've saved the comments. I've, you know, I've been sniffling through the film, video. Just to save you some cheeky comments. Um, yeah, so if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And um, on Instagram, I've got a giveaway coming up on Saturday. So if you're not following me, get on there. Get on the giveaway post. And you'll be in a chance to win some some, some bits and bobs. So, uh, yeah. Take care. See you on the next one.